Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the European Crossover Webinar. And we did go in and see the uh, Federal Reserve, uh, or really the Chairman's Powell speech, as we were talking about, being the the potential, the market mover. I thought we were going to be able to finally see an ease back on the dollar, and that's what we did. Um, saw a pretty good move right from the, right from the get go, and uh, gold traded really well overall. Um, one of the things we were looking for was a move. We need to roll this into February, by the way, but I um, thought we'd keep it in December just for, for reference. Uh, remember, we've been talking about this 1219 uh, and then the break to come into 1212 and um, the key area, the 1219. And then we had talked about uh, really the 1224 and then 1228. And sure enough, we, it came to the 1228 before it backed down kind of reassert itself. Potentially, this thing, like I said, the target still remains the same, 1237. The exponential moving averages, you can see, have now shifted now to the buy side. So you'd be buying this on a dip based on these exponential moving averages that uh, I've had actually over the years. I just haven't used them in a while. But they can generate uh, pretty good directions uh, on a move like this. Um, and it usually stays for a while. It's really based on the 30-minute. I just have it extrapolated. Uh, for the for the two hour but uh, that being said uh, uh, you can see here that uh, we're on a buy mode now it makes sense uh, the dollar has come back just a bit I mean we talked about 1394.95 being the um, the stretch level on the on the euro we got to 1397 and a half uh, actually a nice little um, medium legged doji here you see that here and then we see the market going to pull back. And we talked about this yesterday. Remember, we said, uh, hey, if we get that, don't get, uh, we don't want to stay in the way, but don't get overly excited because as we come to the G20 meeting, you'll see the, you know, uh, the risk pair back. And that's exactly what we're seeing here, seeing it pair back here on the euro. Um, cash dollar index, an important thing that we mentioned yesterday to keep an eye on was the 97.14 on a daily. And we did lose that on a, on a close. So we had just achieved, we know how important this level had been on a closing basis. We got above it the day before, only to quickly go in and lose it, uh, which wasn't a surprise, but this will be your this will be your risk level at this point, okay? Uh, obviously, like I said, going into uh, G20 this weekend, uh, we'll probably keep uh, some of these other pairs on a leash. But certainly, like I said, I think the dollar's pretty well overdue for a pullback. Cable continues to remain under some pressure. Look, we came up here. I don't even remember what the. Um, it says 2863 was our um, bias chart resistance. Made up to 2850. Uh, too far off from that. Um, and the Australian dollar, look at this, very nice rebound back in here to this key, 73.20. Dolly in has eased back a bit. Did make it all the way up, well, you know, all the way up to this 14.03, so they pretty much stretched it for what, for all it was worth. Your risk level now, uh, if you're looking potentially for shorts, it's going to be 1369. You don't want this market to get above 1369 on a two-hour close. Um, you can even give you a little bit more, but that's you can see that that's a critical juncture right there, 1369. Certainly, a pretty good pullback here in the uh, dollar Swiss. I don't. Like I said, I don't pay that much attention to this market anymore. Unless you're specifically trading it, um, this is a pretty good yank down here. But it just kind of does, you know, beats, uh, marches to its own drummer. Pretty nice move here in the in the bonds. We were looking for a resistance. 4024. And they got to 4024 to the tick.
Oh, we're up for a good reaction. Wow, look at this crude oil. I didn't even look at Dollar Cat here, but look at crude oil. Wow, $49 handle. So you're talking about a move of $28. That's just absolutely huge. We talked about this will will slow down this whole talk about the um, the um, inflation, uh, um, which you know could you know recalibrate you know how much the Fed's going to raise. Also, we talked about you know we'll probably see some worries again. This is probably good. you have to keep this in the back of your mind too. Is remember you know when we had seen crude really starting to fall back really bad about it was a year ago when it was, and we saw equities get whacked pretty good. And we're seeing a nice rebound in equities um, because obviously, like I said, this gets back a wind down with the Fed. But you have to wonder once again, at what point do you see this take its, you know, start to worry some across the energy sector? That'll have its own impact in the S&Ps. Certainly not a story for today because obviously the key thing is uh, the Fed kind of easing back, allowing S&Ps. But if we take a move back up in here, obviously a big key level is going to be this 2765-ish area here. It's going to be it's going to limit it because this eventually will drag, you know. So this is a good good thing for the consumer, no doubt about this. But it's going to probably have some concerns about balance sheets going forward and you know, impact on the economy. Also, maybe here in Texas, a lot of oil in certain areas. But I'm just saying is uh, we mentioned that yesterday as a um, – Trying to get the word though, but uh, the sideline story, I'm trying uh, ancillary, ancillary story. But um, let's go and move this out of the way, and we can get into the news. So it says the Canadian dollar rebounds from a five-month low as investors rethink the Fed outlook. And we talked about this leading into Powell's speech, although, like I said, um, remember the last FOMC, I thought that was going to happen, and that didn't, and um, even prior to that. But finally, um, it succumbed, and uh, obviously we've had such a big move in equities and also this huge move in crude oil, too. It's um, certainly going to have its effect going looking out. And uh, I thought the Fed's been a little bit overdone. So you can tell the markets were just keen and ready to go. And boy, right out of the gate, did they take off. Uh, the Canadian dollar uh, rallied against its broadly weaker U.S. counterpart on Wednesday, rebounding from an earlier five-month low after comments from Fed Chair Jerome Powell that were seen as dovish, we were looking for that, by some investors. Powell appeared to signal that the U.S. central bank was nearing an end to its interest rate hikes, saying the Fed's policy was just below a level that near, neither breaks nor boosts a healthy economy. Today's move is a result of changing expectations around the Federal Reserve, said Tim Alt, Director of Currencies at Aviva. Yields on shorter dated U.S. government bonds fell and the U.S. dollar index retreated against a basket of major currencies. Gains for the Lumi came despite a 13-month low for the price of oil when it can as exports. Crude oil futures were a percent lower, 2.5% lower at 50.29 a barrel after U.S. crude inventories rose for the 10th straight week and concerns about excess global supply. Recent weakening in oil prices, including the price of Canadian heavy crude, have weighed on the outlook for Canada's economy and reducing expectations for another Bank of Canada interest rate hike in January. The central bank has hiked five times since July, uh, July 2017. To leave its benchmark interest rate at one and three quarters, chance of a further tightening as soon as January has slipped to about 70% after having been fully priced into the market at the beginning of the month, data from the overnight index uh, swaps market showed. Alberta is in talks to buy rail cars to transport 120,000 barrels per day of crude oil exports and expects a deal to conclude within the week. Premier Rachel uh, Notley said as the energy uh, rich province takes actions to move oil stuck in the region because of a lack of pipeline capacity. Canadian government bond prices were higher across a much of a steeper yield curve in sympathy with U.S. Treasuries. 
Australian New Zealand dollars gain as the U.S. yield advantage threatened. The Australian New Zealand dollars were held hefty gains on Thursday as investors toyed with an idea of an early end to the U.S. rate hikes, a radical development that would likely be bullish for risk assets, emerging markets, and commodities. Data on Australian business in- investments also had an upbeat message with the sharp upward revision to spending plans arguing, uh, auguring well for the continued economic growth. The Aussie dollar has enjoyed the view at 72.99 after climbing 1.1% overnight, its best daily performance of the month. Bulls were now eyeing the top at 73.38, a break of which would take it to territory last trod in August. The New Zealand dollar, or Kiwi, eased off a touch to the 68.44. Remember, that's that key level we had, 68.45. Having risen to 1.2% overnight, only to meet stiff resistance at 68.80. The bounce came after Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell said interest rates were just below the neutral, the level that neither stimulates nor drags on growth. Combined with emphasizing the usual long and variable lags of monetary policy in terms of impact of past hikes, the message hinted at a slow pace of normalization. Not surprisingly, the Dovis message was well received in financial markets with a rally in U.S. equities and bonds. Futures were still priced in a hike for next month, but it's now implying only one more in all of 2019 and an extended pause from then on. Such an outlook <clears throat> could threaten the U.S. dollar's yield advantage over its peers, which have been its greatest asset over the last couple of years. The Aussie was further underpinned by data showing firms now plan to invest $114 billion in the year to June 2019, a marked improvement from just a few months ago. Underpinned by a record profitability, Aussie businesses are expected to lift spending significantly over the next nine months. It was the big, uh, biggest equivalent upgrade in spending in 19 years. The New Zealand business were sounding less cheerful <clears throat> with an ANZ Bank survey showing a net 37% respondent expecting the economy to deteriorate over the year ahead. In debt markets, bonds held into the overnight gains with the Aussie 10 year yields at the lowest in a month at 2.62%. And uh, New Zealand government bonds at 2.8%. Sterling slides as the UK Brexit votes clouds outlook. The pound sank on Thursday amid concerns about the UK Parliament's vote on Brexit and the Bank of England warned of risk to the currency if Britain leaves the European Union in a disorderly manner. Barely four months before Britain is due to leave the EU, Prime Minister Theresa May is struggling to garner support from the Parliament for the agreement she sealed with the EU leaders on Sunday. The possibility of a no-deal Brexit has sent the pound to a two-week low and currency analysts say a recovery is unlikely before next month's parliament vote on May's Brexit deal, a key risk event. It looks like on paper, parliament is going to vote against a deal which will lead us into a heightened uncertainty, said Lee Hardman. Hardman said that a resounding defeat in parliament would increase fears that Britain would struggle to pass uh, future Brexit legislation going forward, and the pound could fall by as much as 4%. Hardman said that a resounding deal, uh, and adding to the gloomy sentiment, the Bank of England warned on Tuesday that Britain risks a bigger hit to its economy than the financial crisis if it crashes out of the European Union without a deal. In that scenario, the pound could lose a quarter of its value, the Bank of England said. May stepped to report warnings about the risk of a disorderly Brexit on Thursday if the UK Parliament votes against the agreement she has struck with the European Union. The timetable is such that actually some people would need to take some practical steps in relation to a no deal if the Parliament were to vote the deal down on the 11th of December, May told a parliamentary committee. Yeah, this is getting a little bit scary here. Um, And this thing is just not getting very much of a bounce. I mean, we had 28.60, and I did have 28.60, and we only made it to 28.50, but I had 28.60. We went with the technicals. Look, there it is. Right there. Oh, it's actually 28.56 and a half. So I guess here's where we came with the 60, I guess. Right there. Yeah, there was our 28.60. Yeah, we just put it just a hair above this. But the thing is, is that, wow, I would have expected a better bounce than this just on plain old short covering. That's it. Just plain old short covering. And I tell you what, it is just really having a tough time. And we already said a, a break of 2772, which we did get and we didn't get the follow through, really opens the door for uh, 2565 that we pointed out on the daily.
There's that 2772 right there. And there he's going to put, and it really opens the door for him. Pull this back a bit. I'll move to 2565. And doesn't even, and when you're talking about 2550, doesn't even mean that it could even smash below that. Really, your real support comes in right in here. This is your first initial, and it is good support there. You can see how, look, when you extend this line here, that held here too. You see that right, right there? You see? But we could come in, the real volume would start to come in around there, down to 24.56. So, yeah, good chance we could even bust through 25, maybe get into the 24.70. If we get some, like I said, we break this. We're already getting below this 20, you know, to lose this 26, uh, 27.72 again, we lost it, we regained it, and we're starting to lose it again. This is almost, well, it kind of makes me think of how the dollar index. Remember how it got above the 20, uh, the 97.14, and then we quickly lost it. We well, see how we gained it, and now we're starting to lose it. So it opens the door for them to move lower. And uh, wow, first target would be, as we've talked about before, would be this, uh, well, on the two-hour chart, the 26.94. But it's just a matter of the, when the thing uh, wants to hit those levels, the stops, what kind of a, a air pocket will we see below that? Dollar weakens as cautious Fed leads to rate hike rethink. The dollar weakened against other major currencies on Thursday as the markets took Federal Reserve Chairman's comments that interest rates are just below neutral as a signal that a three-year hiking cycle is nearing an end. The, the dollar index, which measures the value of the greenback against a basket of major currencies, fell to 96.64, its lowest mark in almost a week. Powell took uh, markets by surprise on Wednesday when he noted the policy rate at two and two to and a quarter is now just below the broad range of estimates of neutral, which in September was 2.5 to three and a half. This marks a departure from comments in October when Powell said rates were a long way from neutral at this point. Clearly, Powell's comments about uh, where the neutral rate is, create a shift in market expectations. We've been talking about this for some time. I thought it was going to take place before this last FOMC meeting, but it's finally come to fruition. Um, with respect to Fed policy, said Jane Foley, and this is interesting. I think this, it does, this is something you want to hang your hat on. So, as I said, um, has created a shift a shift in market expectations. So you'll start to see a greater emphasis on any kind of data that comes out, any type of comments that it may be reinforcing this shift in expectations. Uh, with respect to Fed policy, said Jane Foley, senior currency strategist at Rabobank, that is a dovish factor for the dollar and is a positive for risk appetite. As I mentioned with the dollar index, your risk now is, if you want to start shorting the dollar index, is 97.14. As long as we don't get a daily close above 97.14, that is our risk at this point. This is a daily chart on the dollar index. The shift was reflected in many markets where expectations of Fed increase declined to about 47 basis points over next year from 52. The dollar was also weak across the board and was last down four tenths to 1325 yen. The benchmark 10-year U.S. shields fell to the lowest level since September at 3.013. Focus now on turns to release the session session of the October price index, the Fed's favored inflation gauge for more clues on the outlook for U.S. interest rates. But once again, one of the things you have to keep in mind, which aren't reflected moment to moment, is how do you think that's going to impact inflation going forward? A $28 move in, in uh, just under two months? Yeah, don't you think that's going to affect it going forward? So really any type of moves that would suggest, like if it's confirming, it's going to be looking to a certain extent that my thinking is the market's going to look for any of this stuff as uh, uh, viewing, looking in the rearview mirror, meaning, you know, if you see a decent, okay, inflation outlook, yeah, but how far back is that going to encapsulate this move that we've seen here? So a lot of this stuff would end up getting discounted. Analysts said the minutes were likely to reaffirm the market expectations for a rate hike in December, but were unlikely to have a significant impact since market focus has now turned to whether the Fed will pause the tightening cycle next year. That's what I was just saying. Donald weakness, and like I said, I was referring to the inflation, but right now, now people are going to start to discount. You see what I'm saying? They go, oh, my God, look at the meetings. Yeah, but the meetings were, you know, before 
the minutes could have been affected before he made these comments. And also look at this. If you're talking about inflation, look at this thing. Just dropping like a doggone stone. Dollar weakness in the wake of Powell's comments were expected to be limited given a note of caution ahead of and which we referred to yesterday. And that's what we're saying. Be careful. Don't go too overly crazy. I think that although I think the euro will, will continue to move higher, just keep your, your powder dry until we get past this G20 summit or factor in that. But anyway, it says dollar weakness in the wake of Powell's comments was expected to be limited given a note of caution ahead of the G20 summit on Friday and Saturday with President Trump and Pre uh, China's President Xi Jinping are scheduled to discuss contentious trade matters. Rodrigo Cotrill, senior uh, currency strategist NEB, said safe haven buying could return if there are no signs of a truce between Washington and Beijing over the course of the G20. Elsewhere, Australian rose to 28.30. Bank of England warned on Wednesday that the Britain risked a bigger hit to the economy than it suffered from the global financial crisis a decade ago if it leads the European Union in a disorderly manner, which could include a 25% crash. We already covered, remember, we covered, spent some time yesterday when we were covering, uh, remember, um, in regards to European bond trading. And wow, you're seeing a lot of stuff just moving from, from London, I mean, from uh, the UK. Um, so it's already having a huge impact. Fed's pals are in a pair of dovish shift. Federal Reserve Chair Powell uh, injected investors with a strong dose of optimism on Wednesday, saying the rate was just below estimates. On the face, the comments were a reversal from last month when Powell said key interest rates were probably still a long way from so-called neutral level. Possibility dovish shift in language on Wednesday came as President Trump stepped up those attacks on Powell, criticizing the Fed's hikes as undercutting his economic and trade policies. Trump told the Washington Post just on Tuesday that he's not even a little bit happy with the Fed chief. Powell gave the market, presumably Trump, uh, exactly what he wanted, which was an admission that the previously proposed path to future hikes was probably too aggressive and opening to slowing the rate of hikes. The Fed has settled into a quarterly rate high cycle and is expected to raise rates again next month and will be the fourth hike this year, but signs of a slowdown overseas in nearly two months of market volatility, including a sharp sell-off last week, have clouded an otherwise mostly rosy U.S. picture. We all know that often things turn to be out quite different from even the most careful forecast, Powell said at the Economic Club of New York. Our gradual pace of raising rates has been an exercise in balancing risks. Well, I wouldn't call that a gradual pace, to be quite honest with you, because it's been it hasn't even been pedaled to the metal. It's been pedaled through the floorboard. Rates are still slow by an historical standard, are still low. Factually, Powell's comments on Wednesday and in October are both true when he referenced a range in October. He likely referenced a median, okay? But markets, especially after the recent slowdown, were focused less on subtleties than on what Powell may have telegraphed about the future path of rate hikes. If there's been one certainty of late, it's the market's ability to misinterpret Fed power. This was again on display on today, said Tom Porcell, wrote a note. The Fed Fund futures contract expired January 20th. A heavily traded contract that reflects market expectations for hikes will be at the end of 2019, rallied sharply on record volume and pointed to an implied yield of 2.7%. It was 2.9% already this, uh, this month. So you're seeing this shift as we noted in the one. So once again, I'm just trying to cover this to lay the foundation. Hey, we're now, we're finally starting to turn, although I'll be at late, we're finally starting to turn the ocean liner around. And probably the dollar is going to be a good fade going forward. Neither Clarita nor Powell said definitively whether the rates should stop at neutral, and each stressed that the level was very difficult to estimate. On Wednesday, Powell said paying, Fed is paying very close attention to economic data, even if it expects solid growth, but low unemployment and inflation near its 2% target. Well, like I said, uh, this will have its own impact going forward. And lastly, let's go with gold. Gold gains as dollar sags. The dovish message was constructive for a pure dollar trade perspective. It could edge off the dollar. Dollar slipped from a two-week high. A weaker dollar helps the other local currencies, such as China and India, get back in the game, which could add to gold's luster. So let's go on and move this out of the way. Let's see where the February's at.
Uh, just about two dollars lower than where Deese is at. Deese is at twelve twenty-five February's, so two dollar difference essentially. Okay, so let's. Well, so we talked about yesterday. You know how we'd come down here, and uh, the market even overshot lower than what I thought, which was, you know, we did make it down to this twelve sixty seven. But I thought anything below one thirteen from the day before. I was saying, watch out, I wouldn't be chasing this thing. Uh, and they did try and hang around, but we took that dip. But man, did they shoot right out of the? They, you know, come out and take off uh, right out of the gate. And um, Here's that 1372, remember here, and we did back away from there, came down to 1338, reassured ourselves, and we talked about 1395 being the stretch, okay? So we made it to 97 and a half, but you can see here they came up just short of the 72 before backing down to 38, reasserting itself, pulling back, and then in Asia, and then making this move here. I think that the we're still going to have some, you know, have the reins on this until we get past the G20, but... Uh, I think we'll be able to move higher. Um, news out of Italy has started to wane a bit. And uh, although, as I mentioned, there was still a lot of uh, uh, issues because uh, they were going to go and take some action, disciplinary action against Italy. But most of that has already been, I would think, factored in. The market already realized it, a lot of uh, just uh, procedural things. So I think that we could probably see the euro rebound at this point. Probably your next uh, target is going to be just above 1448. So when we look at today, and you, you know that we're going to have uh, Mark will be, it'll keep it from moving too high with this whole G20, but I don't see how they don't come up with something. Really, it's a matter of whether, whether Trump is willing to give something, and I think that he would. Um, so um, let's see, we came down here. That's going to be your support right there. It's 1343 right now. Resistance right there, fourteen nineteen half. That's fourteen twenty. And I think it might be just a hair bit early, but I think the dollars at this point will start to be a fade. So we want to update things looking forward. So it's going to be, it's going to be a bullish mode for the euro now. Let's go move into cable. Um, mm -mm -mm. This is really in some tough shape uh, and actually a little bit scary in a way because we can't get a bit of a rally on this thing. So resistance at this point, it's going to be right there. And, I'm almost inclined to say 2801, but we'll give it up to 2816. <laughs> My concern is we're just going to blow right through this. That's my concern. Um, we're just going to go with this old standby, which is 2694. I'm afraid this is going to go right through this. And I think that 2694 is just going to offer an area where you can cover shorts. Uh, so, um, and probably we'll shoot it, maybe get down to like 2682, something like that. But we'll go with 2694. Let's go to the Aussie dollar. 
Well, we really did go in and pop up here a pretty good little chunk. Um, look, that didn't make any sense. It must have been 73 or something like that. Because that, that was two pips above the low right there. Um, but here's our resistance. It's been in place for a long time, 73.20 here. But I think the Aussie's just now starting to stretch its legs a little bit. Uh, I think we can make it up to 73.78. Um, we almost made it up here to this 37. That's what I was going to point out here. Um, let's go with 37 only because we still have the G20. So uh, if they can jump up here, we'll probably use that as an area to go on. And some people will take a little bit of uh, money off the table just ahead of the G20. Uh, that's a risk, but I don't think it's going to come out bad. But we'll, but you never know. But it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So I think they'll come up with something. Here's the here's the risk though. Like I said, you could come up and you could come in on on uh, Sunday evening and see some of these currencies having gapped up. That's your risk. If they if they get an okay thing out of the G20, and I, honestly I don't see why they wouldn't. It's and only because I think it's in Trump's best interest that they come up with something. Um. Uh, I'll tell you what, for right now, we'll just put it right here at 73.54 until tomorrow. And we'll see where we stand right now. 73.54. Support, as things have started to turn around now for the Aussie. Right there, 7260. And let's go and take a look at the Kiwi. Well, here's that 68.45, and we got through it. It's been a big level right in here. Uh, we came right in here into this resistance level, so the market has done okay there. Tell you what, for now, we'll just although it's 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 held up very well, better than the Aussie. If you look here, this pullback. Um, for now, we'll just keep it here, which is the 68.87. I mean, keep it here. I mean, we'll, this level here. So let's move that to 68.87. Pullbacks. Right there, 68. Probably just a little bit rich there. Right there. You see this little bit of volume, all these little touches right here. Right there. <clears throat> 6808. About 60 pips away. Let's move into the dollar CAD. This could be a whole lot higher if you consider where kudos at, but things have started to change around now with uh, the perception of where the Fed will be. Um, 
So you would think at this point now it it will be, and especially how far it's come, gives you an opportunity for a nice little pullback here. Risk is going to be right there at 3305. 3305. Keep an eye. Look at crew starting to bounce a little bit here. We were with a look when we came on the show, we had a $49 handle. Now we got 5111. But keep an eye on that. And you shouldn't see an impact here. So your risk would be 3305. Seen some decent little short coming here in the crew. Now 5119, Support on a very short term basis is going to come in right there at 32. Go right there. 32.28. Dallas was it's just a pair that I really just don't pay much attention to anymore at all. <clears throat> And you can see, you know, see how it just sits there for a long time. I have no patience for a market like this. And it just, like it says, and on top of that, it's doing its own thing. It's marching to its own drummer. But unless someone's trading from a longer term perspective, phew. risk at this point, I mean, if you're looking for shorting this thing, Obviously, it would be this 99.87, but I don't know if we could tighten it up a little bit better. For right now, I'd be here at 76. Well, this is the key area, though, but we'll, we'll just go with this, keep it, you know, with the technicals, the 99.87, but it, if... On a little short-term basis, is 76, which is only 11 pips away, but we'll go with this 99.87. Support, 98.96, right there. Dolly in, finally starting to see this thing break down a little bit. Here's that key level. There's your key risk level. I don't necessarily think that we'll visit it again. Um, but we may get a little bit of a bit of the dollar ahead of G20. So we're going to keep this 1369. I think it's a sell, going to be a sell at this point. Uh, certainly has that bullish mode, but it'll be against this 1369. That's your risk level, two hour close. Support, 12.93. A little bit of a medium-legged doji here, so the market's a little bit tired. Look for a respite. 
come back down here once again that 12.93 for starters Cash dollar index. Well, there's that 97.14 that we talked about on the daily. And that's your risk level right there. There it is on the daily. I think once we can get past this G27, things will be a little bit clearer. But um, let's see how we end up playing out. But I think it's going to be – we'll start to move lower. I don't think the wheels are going to come off the caboose or anything, but I'll probably dip down here, then hang up, then maybe pop up a little bit, then hang up, then drop again, and eventually we'll get to a point where we can you know, start to slide. Um, we might eventually make it down here to test this area, but not without a little – uh, stalls and pops along the way, but uh, eventually that's where they'll probably come down to 93.89. So 97.14 is your risk level at this point on a daily close. And there's the 97.72, right? Oh. 9772. No, I was thinking that. It's just all completely off This would be right here, uh, and you might get a bid ahead of the G20. So this is going to be um, – obviously, 31 is big, but that was also 78%. We were able to get above it. Remember how we tested it and we held it? Obviously, we blew right through it uh, at the beginning of pound speech. I think that right here, you see this, this close here, and the market dips, and the key thing is you come up here, you pair back and you take out these little lows and you hold here. You see there? And then we come back, we close here. That's going to be the real area here. You can also make, you can look at this. Remember how I said we came back down here? We tested. You see right there? And the market launched up. So. That's just below that key 9714. We'll just go with that. Uh, so let's go with that. It's 9709. It's eight and a half. Let's call it 9709, which is just below that 9714. You see how the market jumped up, came down, tested it, defended it. Okay, and then from there we launched. So that's key. 9709. Support. For now, it'd be 9653. 
right now the market's trying to defend this key area here, this 96.84. And we did bounce off of that. Remember yesterday we, we saw that in the market bounce. This 84, remember how we started at the beginning of the week and we said, hey, look, they were able to get above it and we lost it. So we said, well, this has a lot to do probably with some holiday trading and how we barely started into it. And once we reclaimed the 84, everything started to look, turn rosy and look where they and look exactly where they came to that same area they took it out by what two pips i think at the time we even had 9680 as our bias chart support uh yesterday okay and um from where they would i think i said that that would be the initial bounce bounce area. we've now moved already to 53 but i think it was 9680 um because we said hey it might take it out by a, a couple of pips or so and we did see them defend that area you see here this is when the market rebounded the, i mean the euro went to down to what was it 1338 before it, it moved higher so we bounced off of that area here they're just moving from level to level and came back down to test it and here we are and we've come here we made new lows but look we have this we wouldn't call it a medium legged doji we can see here finish in the middle so then we're able to hold this and we start to work back up higher but it'll be 53 um this is important this 84 though but like I said, going into tomorrow, maybe we see a bit of the dollar. Uh, it'll be 97.09. But for today, 96.53. And let's move on to gold. Now, gold is trading at a uh, – we've moved into February. And uh, it's trading at a $2 um, – the DS gold, which we've been following – is a 1227 um so this is trading at a four dollar deficit to that or four dollar discount so you gotta keep that in mind so remember on gold we had this 1224 but i said hey look i think we can make it up to 1228 that was from the day before because I thought that's a rare area to rebound, eventually rebound to. I think one of the guys had asked me, hey, where are you looking at? That's when I was getting long at 12, got long at 12, 1230. Had put that that le uh, uh, price into the chat room. Uh, and I was telling him, okay, we're looking at 1216 and then uh, 1219. And then I uh, think if, if, if things turn around and Powell gets soft, which wasn't yesterday, it was coming into the day before, um, I think we could make it up to 1228, which is that's where we went to, to 1228. Um, eventually, we made it there. Um, so we're just about there. And saying as we come up to that 1227, uh, so we're looking at, at uh, the February gold now. We've rolled into that, and it trades at a uh, discount to the DEES of, you can see here, three bucks. Okay. Um, Wait a minute, I'm wrong. What am I saying? Uh, it's actually trading at a premium. I was seeing that 1220 thing in 1223. Um, so I'm glad I kept that up there So for some perspective. So 1232, but this is 1230, so I apologize. It's trading at a $6 premium. And I was wondering why I'd be trading. I go, why the future would be trading at a discount? But, but yeah, it's actually 33, so I want to keep that in mind and keep this here. Because that reminds me where my numbers are at. So 12:38, which would be 12. Uh, we've talked about that before. If this was going to resolve itself to 12:38, 12:38, then on this one would be um, almost seven dollars. Should be looking at 12:45. Is it would be comparable to 12:38? Let's take a look here. This is still the D skull. Okay, so it hasn't gone above the 1228 yet. So, um, and I remember on the um, on the two hour, although we've got the Feb gold here, we're looking for a move down up here to eventually could make it to 1237. Well, this is the Feb now, and these this was based. It's the same resistance, but uh, that really equate to that moving up to 1243. So, because um, it's already trading at that premium, so but you can see that's a good resistance level here. But um, probably have to get adjusted to the February, obviously, as compared to the December. December trading at 1227 right now, just under that 1228. 
with the Fed trading at 1233. Uh, resistance on the Fed then now <clears throat> is going to be the 12.37. To me now, comparing it to the Ds, that equates to the 12.30. So we'll go with that as 12.37. But that wasn't the target I'd be going to. The target then would be the 12.45 on February gold that we thought that the market could resolve itself to. So it's going to be 12.30. And don't forget it's Feb. I think go will eventually go and work hard once we get past all this G20 business. Um, support. It's going to be 12... I don't even know if we'd make it down that low. Let's go right there, 1227. 1227, which is basically 1220 on the Ds. And remember that breakout area is 1219. So it'd be 1227. Once again, uh, beware that this is Feb. Thirty-year bond made it right to our forty twenty-four. This is going to be the can you keep that as a resistance and the support will come in right there thirty-nine twenty-six. There is some more support in here at forty even, but we'll give it down to potentially this thirty-nine twenty-six. Buns, like we had 61.30 and it made it to 61.34. I still like the 61.30. Just going to go with this, 61.30 and keep it. And uh, support comes in right there, 61.04. So 61.30 raises seven, support 61.04. With the DAX, <clears throat> well, we should all trade a bit quiet here. Hmm. We'll go right there, 11364 for resistance. And supposed to be twelve to eleven two thirty nine. That's gonna remain the same. And there's the uh, buys chart for today. Um, as I mentioned, uh, we had that 1395 as our stretch for the euro. We got to 1397 and a half. <clears throat> that was early in the European session before we paired back a bit. Uh, support's going to be 13.43. If we do pop up, squeeze a little bit, 14.20, and then I would use that as a good area to get out. Unless you're looking at holding it for a much longer term. So I would think we'll probably see a pullback going into the G20. Unless we see some constructive news, positive comments, which I doubt, uh, ahead of that. But uh, that takes us for today, and thanks for joining us here on the European Crossover.